Hello and welcome. My name is Brian McAvoy. And I'm Tim Shank. This is Two Cyborgs in a Microphone. Today we're talking about a potential breakthrough in the science of aging. It turns out that nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD, a coenzyme found inside mammal cells, is crucial for cellular repair. Yeah, I think it was 2013 when Harvard, the Institute on Aging, and the University of Wales, I think, found that injecting mice with nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide. Nice. So it basically reversed the age in mice. Now, it reversed the age, but in certain aspects. Right. They, they didn't just go, oh, okay, this mouse is, you know, six months old. It was two years. What were they looking at? No, you're, yeah, right. There were a couple of markers. One of them was insulin resistance. I think it was muscle wasting. And I don't see the other one offhand here, but there were three markers that they looked at or three traits that they looked at. And in all three of those, the condition of the soft tissue in those regards went from the age of a two, two-year-old mouse, which is an aged mouse, to that of a six-month-old mouse. And in, in human terms, that would be the equivalent of a 60-year-old to a 20-year-old. Well, that's super important. Being able to reverse the age of some of your soft tissues is so incredible. And we'd mentioned this on a previous episode, kind of as a, as a prelude to what we were going to get into. And this, if this works as well as we hope, it could be the proverbial fountain of youth in regards to soft tissue. Which is, that's very important because most, almost everything is soft tissue. And the studies are just getting started. The human trials are just getting started as of the middle of this year, approximately. But the fact that it's happening for these three markers or these three pieces of information indicates that it probably is happening for all of the soft tissue in the entire body. So they, I think they were testing muscle tissue. Your heart is made of muscle. They think it's happening for all of the soft tissue. Let's step back a little bit and talk about what it does. And I'm not, I am not a scientist and I'm not a doctor. Everyone's a scientist. Ah. You write stuff down, you're a scientist. So n- NAD, or I'm just going to say NAD, it's nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Let's not say that over and I'm over. call it NAD. NAD, okay, NAD, is an enzyme that exists inside of the cellular membrane. And that enzyme takes an electron from the mitochondria through the the nuclear membrane to the nucleus. And as we age, this kind of breaks down, becomes less effective, and that effectively is one of the signs of aging, right? It's really important because it's talking about cellular energy because your mitochondria work with the ATP and ADP, which is the other side of the ATP, that brings the energy that, that is the cellular energy the mitochondria take the electron from the ADP, turning it into ATP, and they use this this substance, the NAD, to transmit, to send that electron into this nucleus of the cell. And the main one of the main functions of that is cellular repair, DNA repair, and a lot of the maintenance functions that our cells have. You sound like a scientist to me. Yeah. So <laughs> to break it down for somebody as dumb as me, basically this is what's controlling it. Without this, we're power starving our nucleus. And through that, they're not, they're not able to reproduce as easily. They're not able to perform maintenance and repair DNA as easily. Over time, as NAD decreases, NAD decreases, and we can talk about how what they think is causing that, but they do know that it does, as we age, NAD decreases. And they think, as that decreases, our cellular repair mechanisms shut down slowly and eventually accumulate to be some of the age-related diseases that we see that kill us all the time. Well, this is right off of Aubrey de Grey's list of things that kill humans. This is right off that list. And we're making some headway towards fighting this one back. What's making the difference? Okay, they, in the Harvard study, they in, they injected the mice with NAD+, plus, which is a version of it. There's different names for it, depending on whether it's carrying that electron or not. What they found, NAD, is made of, basically, it's niacin, or vitamin B3. No, vitamin B, at a, at a, at a small molecular level. So what, what they found is that there's a couple of versions of that molecule, two of them specifically. You can take as an oral supplement that are easily absorbed by the body and and get into the bloodstream that 
that are precursors to NAD. What this comes down to is this is something people can do at home, like right now. Like I am. And me. (laughs) Sounds like a couple grinders experimenting with their brain chemistry. Yeah, so we got a hold of some of the NMN, which is nicotinamide mononucleotide. You make it sound so sketchy. (laughs) We got a hold of some. I, I am currently taking, and we both took nicotinamide mononucleotide the furthest step that we know that we can consume that's th- we, we can consume orally of this niacin that gets into the cell membrane and then creates this nad and it doesn't even taste that bad oh it tastes I, you know i kind of like it it's kind of tart brian why don't we start i guess we can start with you and you can talk about how much you took how you took it and what your experience was Twice a day, I would take 160 milligrams. Usually in the morning, I would just throw it in with a fruit smoothie. And in the evening, I'd throw it into some carbonated water. I used carbonated water because it had a habit of basically mixing itself. To to measure the effectiveness of this, what I did is a couple weeks before I started taking any of this, I started running again. And I hadn't been running for a while, so I was expecting that I would have linear progress. I would, you know, just naturally become a runner again. And my hope was that when I started taking the NMN, my progress would take a sharp increase. I didn't notice this. Circumstances I exercised under were not controlled at all. I found that the biggest factor in my ability to run was temperature. I think I had some of the best days when it was actually raining on me while I went for run because I refused to not go. I didn't really notice any change myself. Uh, I was kind of hoping that my knees, which sound like Rice Krispies when I stand up, would kind of stop that crackling sound because that's that's soft tissue. Granted, it's cartilage. And I I didn't notice any change there. So let me ask you something, Brian. Did you have any changes as far as your recovery time? Because that is often touted with taking NMN or the other version of this, which is nicotinamide riboside or NR. I didn't notice any changes, but I wasn't specifically looking at that, to be honest. So I can't say one way or the other. Overall, did you feel any negative effects? No, none at all. Okay. Oh, I also took uh, once per day resveratrol. That's an important point, right? Because resveratrol, or I think it's called resveratrol. Yeah, that stuff. It's the grape seed extract that they think is the good part of, of what red wine does for you. It's good for cardiovascular health, and so that it's a refined version of that. That activates the CERT1 enzyme, which is key for for DNA repair. So taking that also, it, it works synergistically, and I don't really like to use that word, but it's true. So what were your experiences, Tim? Because you had much different results than I felt. Yeah, and I was I was taking um, a higher dose than you. So what I did is I took 1,000 milligrams four days, the first four days. And then for a month, I was taking a third of a gram, so 330 to 350 milligrams once a day and I was doing it in water just like you know just like you not not carbonated water and then since then I have after that first month I upped my dosage I'm taking now 500 milligrams once a day in water in addition to that I'm also taking coq10 an amino acid that's supposed to be good for mitochondrial health and replication and I'm also taking resveratrol um, 14 milligrams per day along with a B supplement I I, I kind of had I tried to come up with a kind of a complementary blend of nutrients to help with with the whole thing. So a stack. Yeah, a stack. You know me. I notice a few things, and a lot of these are hard to document. They're very subjective. I noticed that my my skin spots, my age spots, moles, kind of where sh- they're shrinking. There is one on my face that's almost gone. There's another one that was, you know, they get they get darker and bigger over time as you get older that are that are shrinking now that's a day-to-day it's a very mild change so i'm not 100 percent confident that that's i'm not talking myself into thinking that one thing that i do notice is i can see my phone now again when i couldn't i had to get glasses about two or three years ago because i couldn't see my phone anymore on a regular basis now though i am reading my phone and my watch which has even smaller text without my glasses. Now, I don't know for sure that 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 is, I don't have any measurements of that yet, but when I'm done with this course of supplementation, I'm going to go back into the eye doctor, and I I really expect them to have a different diagnosis this time of... I hope they do. I do too. 
Another thing is recently the doctor put me on another blood pressure medication and I ran out of that medication and I'm testing my blood pressure daily and it my blood pressure did not go up to what it was before the medication. Wow. So I'm off of one of my medications. I'm looking to take going off of one of the others. That's super cool. I mean, that is that is pretty incredible, uh, especially if these effects continue after you stop taking the NMN. It is. And, you know, with the way this stuff works, and if you look at the studies, there's tons of studies on this. And they think, I mean, they, they're they looking at it that, it that it treats diabetes, it protects against Alzheimer's, non-melanoma cancer, skin cancer. Well, I thought the, the mole was almost the most interesting part because that's something, the way you described it to me was you used to cut yourself shaving because of, of the one on your face and now your razor just glides over it. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Actually, you can hardly even see it now. Wow. And and again, I, I have trouble trusting myself. I didn't take a detailed picture <laughs> under controlled light before and after or anything like that. It's yeah, a, well, you didn't know that was going to change. No, I didn't. I was looking for very specific things and they didn't change, so my... My outlook on this is far different from yours. We should also mention that in addition to taking more supplements and a higher dose of NMN, you're also older than I am. So the chemicals naturally occurring in my system, when I took the supplement, it was, you know, maybe a single digit percentage increase, whereas to you, it's probably a, a much sharper increase to your cells. It could be. It, we do, There's no real way to know without testing, but we all have NAD in our in intracellular NAD from birth till death. And it just becomes less and less. They can measure it in the blood, but we didn't do any of that sort of measuring. The chances are that you being 10 years younger than I, or nine, how old are you? Well, I mean, let's not get into that. I am 36 years old as of June 2017. Well, in, in any case, you're nine, being nine years younger than me, you are bound to have more... NAD in your cells and in your blood than I do. So that's something to be considered. And we did not, we're not scientists, we don't measure this stuff. So Yes, all of this stuff is purely anecdotal. We took records and everything, we wrote stuff down because we wanted to know for ourselves. And this does not, does not constitute a scientific study by no. any stretch of the imagination. We, we did this so that we could have a show about it. Right. And it does give our, our listeners something to go on as far as you've, you've heard from a couple of people that are, have taken it directly. I'm, I'm continuing to take it for a couple more months here. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I hope I'm we can do dying. another show on it. Yeah. And I hope that when I go back into the eye doctor this next time, that would be some very solid proof because they take detailed measurements on the lenses and the curvature and all of that stuff. I fully expect to see a change there. So that would be solid documentation and i'm looking forward to seeing if that comes true or not yeah maybe we'll release that episode as a patreon exclusive Hint. we alluded to different versions of the supplement that we're taking and we took nmn which is nicotinamide mononucleotide there's another one that's nicotinamide riboside that is further up in the metabolic chain but they say is more effective and it's cheaper. I think the grinder community appreciates less expensive stuff. But as always, you got to do your research. I mean, with supplements, especially in the United States, there is no regulation at all. So something can say it's nicotinamide riboside, and it can have the tr smallest of amounts complemented <laughs> by something like brown rice flour, which is which is what happened to a friend of mine. He bought some nicotinamide riboside. And he found out that it was like 90% brown rice flour. Proprietary blend that they called something like Ignite or some garbage like that that was basically flour. There's a couple of companies that have been tested. You can look up those tests and find, you know, find the forums that, that tell you which ones actually have proven themselves out. Yeah, we don't want to see any of our listeners come back and say that they got screwed over with brown rice. That'd just be sad. Yeah. Right? Well, thank you, Tim. Yeah, it, and I want to thank our listeners for listening. We'd like to invite all of you to email us at cyborgs at twocyborgs.com or you can shoot either of us an email at tim at twocyborgs.com or brian at twocyborgs.com. And if our webmaster ever gets off his ass to bring our site up to speed, you can check us out at twocyborgs.com. 
You can check out the store, go to Cafe Press and get one of our hooded sweatshirts with the Two Cybic logo, or you can get one of the coffee mugs like I've got, and either way, you can just keep yourself warm. All of that stuff is online. I just want to point out before you call me out and say get off my ass. It's it's all everything you mentioned there is live, <laughs> dude. It's all live. There's very few things that are missing. Anyway, sorry. Did your dog ever get the shirt? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, the one I got, the size chart, you know, it, they're it, they're always a little off. Put it on our smaller dog. She hated it. She doesn't like wearing things. <laughs> she was the most needy little thing, but she looked cool. She was warm. <laughs> Do you get a picture? I did. I did, as a matter of fact, and I'll send that to you. Well, I'll upload that to our I website. I think your dog should have an honorary spot on the website. You can be our mascot. <laughs> All right. Two cyborgs and a puppy. <laughs> this is Brian McAvoy, and I'm slurping from one of those mugs right now. And this is Tim Shank. You have been listening to Two Cyborgs in the Microphone, brought to you by two cyborgs who both have microphones. Like, follow, share, plus one, and don't forget to subscribe on any of the popular podcast services, including Google Play Music, iTunes, and Stitcher. Help us move up the podcast ladder by subscribing and commenting on iTunes. And don't forget Twitter, at at Two two Cyborgs. Brian always abandons me in the middle of the show, so here we go. What should I do now? I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, I will shout. Tip me over, pour me out.